Equity in education is not just important, it's fundamental. It is core to the mission of a system of public education. We have to center equity in everything that we do when it comes to building a system that delivers high quality public education. Now more than ever, uh, equity is critical. Many of our students already lack resources in various ways, whether they're resources at home or if they're resources in the classroom. When we don't pause to identify how do we provide equitable services and supports for our students and for our staff, they will continue to lag behind. In this video, we will outline ways to improve equity in education using a structured approach to family engagement. The approach is built on a framework for effective family engagement created by Virginia Tiered Systems of Supports. We'll discuss the role each component plays in strengthening education approaches in the context of equity. But what is equity, and how is it related to, but different from equality? Equity truly is just ensuring that everybody gets what they need. Not getting the same thing, but getting what they need, and providing systems, structures, and supports to ensure that happens, and reflecting on our own biases and our process that either inhibit or support that in happening. We've been measuring achievement gap in Virginia for over 20 years, and we actually haven't seen that gap close at all in that time period. When we look at graduation in Virginia, while our graduation rates overall are very, very high, when we look at our Latinx students, they still lag significantly behind. When we look at diploma type in Virginia, while uh, for white students, over 60% of our white students are earning an advanced diploma, just 40% of African-American students are earning an advanced diploma. We have to begin to do things differently if we wanna see different results. Family engagement is an effective and time-tested way to help achieve those different results. Family engagement is a full and equitable partnership between families and schools, and everyone is successful when they have that same focus. It's all about building relationships, but it has to be a full and equitable partnership between both. Students do better in school when the parent is involved uh, with school. They're more likely to graduate. They're more likely to go to college. They're more likely to have a lasting career. It's important that I have my mom and my teacher support um, because I know that it's always somebody that's going to push me and always say, well, this is the way to go and this is what you should do. It's like it's always something positive that's coming towards me. It makes me feel, you know, good so I can be able to keep going instead of wanting to give up. Our world is very diverse and it's important that it's part of this equity work that we get to know our families and increase our culture proficiency around the different cultures to traditions that families bring to this work and not make assumptions or decisions based off our own traditions. In order to do that, we need to build positive relationships and engage in dialogue with them to know their preferences and be able to meet their needs most effectively. It's really important for schools to be open and honest with parents about things that are going on and it might be something as mundane as a teacher is going to be out for a week and you need to know ahead of time that there's going to be a sub. Uh, the fewer surprises, the better. Explicitly saying, you know, you are the expert of your child. Help me, help me know you better as a family, help me know your child better, validates families as equal partners in the process of educating their child and helps them to feel respected and really communicates that they are kind of those co-equal members in this partnership. It's very important that families have a voice, whether it's um, at the division level, at the school level, or at the individual class level. We really and truly rely on families to be a part of that shared decision-making. Tell me about your family. Tell me what you see, how your child being successful. And if we're really truly open to hearing what they're saying, not just saying those words, but actually being re receptive and reflective on it, um, I think we have a great opportunity to kind of hear some things that we may not ordinarily hear. We're always finding ways to communicate with our parents, whether we're sending flyers, whether we're sending information through our instant alert, through our newsletters, through our newspaper, social media we use a lot of. Family engagement is not just simply one-way communication. 
It's two-way communication that responds to the needs that family members are expressing. Sometimes we know exactly what we want to say. Just having those other little tools, like the script or like a flow chart um, or a communications guide, those types of things are always helpful. Our population is very diverse, so we have to accommodate all those languages. The first step is communication, trying to gain that trust so they can communicate with us better. Once they communicate with us better, then the entire system kind of start rolling and taking place. In multi-tiered supports, educators use three broad levels of services to meet the varying needs of each student in academics, behavior, and social emotional wellness. The supports grow more individualized with every step from tier one to tier three. There's not a one-fits-all strategy or approach when we're supporting families. So if a family has many, many needs or supports that they're trying to provide their child, we just have to find what is most effective for that individual family. There's many times there's multiple agencies working with, with the family. And so for us to kind of work unilaterally addressing what we think might be the issue without acknowledging those other um, agency contributions, Again, it's not going to end in a good result for the family. It's not going to end in a good result for the students. Some of our students need food at home. They may need hygiene products at home. They may need other supports. Uh, so when they have those types of things, then they're able to come back to school and be successful and have a sense of pride, knowing that they have all their basic needs that are met. When something is, is difficult, I am looking for um, openness. I'm looking for communication. One strategy that's highly effective is bringing families in at the onset of decision making rather than bringing them in at the end and asking for their reaction. Yes, there was a problem at school. So I reached out to the teacher. Me and her actually solved the problem. Yes, she was there for me. She listened to it all while I, what I have to say and she was there to help me out. Implementing the family engagement and communicating, it has built trust in turn, when we have to call parents, if there is an issue, whether it's attendance, whether it's behavior, whether it's an academic concern, our parents trust us enough to know that we're gonna do what's best for their child. Try to help the student with that problem, and that's basically making the effort if you're trying to help them with their problems, trying to make sure they have everything they need to be successful, not only in school, but home as well. We look at a lot of data. We look at academics, we look at behavior, we look at um, attendance, and we try to find patterns and try to find ways to help people that are struggling. So data helps pinpoint the actual issue. So it's one thing when you hear something that's going on, but when you can actually see it, it gives you the opportunity to strategize, to come up with solutions and feedback. There's always a story behind data, and it's one thing to look at the numbers, but it's another thing to have families explain to the school the reason why the numbers are what they are. Who's missing? Who are the individuals that have been marginalized, who are not often engaged in our decision-making processes? And then building intentionality around making sure we've heard from those voices. The role of the school leader is to set the tone and the culture that this is a place where we will open our doors to the community, where we will value parent input, where we will see things through multiple lenses. Sometimes we assume that everybody understands each other, and they don't. But when they see that school districts put emphasis on equity, on making sure that all kids are valued, all students are included, that really sends a strong message. Leadership can meet you where you are by just simply having the conversation. You have to let the parents know that you are here for them, that you actually want to hear their concerns. At the end of the day, this is our community, these are our students, and they need us. This is These students are our future, and they matter. So I feel as if the parents know that they matter, then they can translate that to the students so that they can know that they matter. Just putting yourself in the shoes of that student. If I were that student, what would I need? and then, uh, then try to address that. And that is what builds your empathy, and your empathy builds your relationship, and it builds a powerful student.